Hello there and welcome. In this video, we are going to go over modding for F4-24, what you can expect from modding, where to find mods, and generally what is available for F4 Manager along with some of the more popular options. We're going to go over a little bit also how you can install them, although that is generally very well explained on the mod page themselves. What you're seeing right now is overtake.gg, which is probably the most common place to find mods for F4 Manager. It is going to require you to make an account to download these mods. That's really the only downside. Most mods are found here. As you can see, there's also mods for other racing games if you're interested. And what we are going to be doing here in this video is kind of just going over some of the more popular ones, explain what they do, how to install them, and also what you can basically expect from them. Now, before we get too deep into this video, I do want to warn you that the majority of the mods for F1 Manager are going to be purely visual mods. They're not really going to change any sort of game functionality. They're just going to change how the game looks for the most part. And as you can see, most of these mods are livery mods that change how the in this case, Ferrari and their helmet looks. Same here for the Alpine team. And also racing suits, sponsor mods, logos. You get the idea. Most of these are just going to change how the game looks visually, which is still a huge thing, so don't get me wrong. But I, wanna, I don't want to get the wrong impression already from the get-go. But with that said, we are going to go through these mods in order. I have them sorted right now by how many downloads they have. And we're going to take a look at some of the more popular ones and explain what they do. We are going to start here by taking a look at the well most popular mod, which is the real sponsor logos mod, which basically just replaces all the fake sponsor logos in the game with real ones. This is basically a big thing for Creative Team as you'll be putting together your own livery with sponsors on it. And this basically just replaces those fake sponsors with real ones. It's a pretty simple mod in that regard. As you can see, also, it's very easy to install. We just extract the full files to F1 Manager content packs, which means you can also do this for Epic Games, as you really just need to find the installation folder, and I'll show you how to do it with Steam. As you can see now, I found my local disk. I went to Program Files. I found Steam. We go into Steam Apps. We go Common. We find F1 Manager. From here, we go F1 Manager again, Content, Packs, and basically what we would have to do if we wanted to install this mod is just put the packs in here. This will also go for things like extended UI, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Basically, any mod that wants you to install pack files, you just drop those files right here, making it incredibly easy to install. The second mod that we're going to be taking a look at here is called extended UI, and it does exactly what it says. It extends your UI. Main thing it does though is actually extend this square on the left side of your screen, which, which has a lot of information and basically adds more columns, adds more information and generally gives you honestly information that you should have anyways. It basically is a very simple mod, gives you more information. It does take up quite a lot of the screen, however, but you get nice things like having sector times in qualifying. You generally don't actually find this thing easy, but it basically just again adds a lot of information on this left side panel. It does make it a lot bigger, which can be a negative, but it's a lot more information. And honestly, I do like it quite a lot myself. Installing this is the same as the previous one. Just drop the pack file in the correct folder. Next up here, we have the maximal graphic preset, which is basically a mod that tries to make the game look as pretty as possible. So if you have a beefy computer and want the game to look a little bit better, this is definitely a mod that I would recommend you try out. As you can see from the screenshots here, it does make the look game look a lot prettier but it does require quite a lot of performance in order to get here. So do keep that in mind. You can test it out as you see fit because this maximum graphic preset mod actually comes with a lot loads of different settings. And we're going to take a quick look at them before we go over how to install it. So let's take a quick look at what you actually get when you download this. This is what is in the maximum graphic preset mod. And basically here we have the non ray tracing variants for borderless full screen in both uh, uh, DX12 and non DX12. We have the non ray tracing variant full screen and we have the ray tracing variant full screen as well. Basically, the way this mod works and how to install it is a little bit confusing if you don't look at their guide. And basically, what we want to do here is let's say that we want ray tracing variant full screen. We click on this, we find our, our resolution, and then we get two files. We get the engine and the game user settings. Basically, this changes the settings for uh, the visuals. So we want to copy both of these set, both of these, 
and then we're going to find our way to the place where we will need to drop them. And that is a little bit different from where we drop the packs off. So this is going to be a little bit more confusing, but it's basically in the same place that where you can find save file for F1 manager. In this case, we go local, disk C, users. This would be your username. And from here, we want to type in app data. App data is a hidden folder, so you do need to kind of type it in up here. Generally, that's how I like to do it. It's just the easiest way for me. I've gotten used to it. But yeah, typing in app data here does reveal that hidden folder. And from here we go local. We find our F1 manager 24 folder. We go saved and we go config windows. And here's where you want to put in those files. And you do want to replace the files that are here. That basically allows you to improve the graphics in an easy way. Well, in a very easy way. Now, if you don't like the graphic settings that has been kind of set up for you, you can just delete these files and uh, basically verify integrity and you'll have new files. So don't worry about it. It's easy to uninstall as well. Now, for those of you also might as well, while I am here, we might as well take a look at where you find save games. And that's basically the same place, save games here. And here you have a list of your save files. Before we go over the database editor, I want to go over conversion mods, basically mods that try and change the game to a different season. In this example, it's a 2010 season mod. Most of these mods will just be save, edited save files. That's the best way I can put it. And this is a good example. As you can see, this is a 2010 season mod by Ned. And he's changed the calendar, he's changed the drivers to mimic the 2010 season. And basically, a lot of things here have been changed to I make it as close to 2010 season as possible. The reality of the situation, however, is that this isn't a it isn't a conversion mod, it's a conversion save. Basically, it's used the database editor. There are currently two of them, this one offline, and as well as this one that is online. I'll show them in a little bit. But basically, it's used both of these to change a save game. And if you do get any dot save file as the file you get from downloading a conversion mod, you need to find the, uh, the save games folder that I showed you previously. As you see here, you go to your user, updater, local, FO manager, save, save games, and you drop it in here. And that is literally the conversion save. Not really much to say about it, but this, there's a lot of them, but most of them are just data edit edited save files. So you install them, you basically just drop them into your save, file, save folder and you load them up. That's literally how they work for the most part. Anyways, lastly, we have the database editor. And as mentioned, there are more than one. There is an offline database editor made by N4X. I've seen that snacks. He's also going by Ignatia Ureta on Reddit. He's made a lot of good, uh, well, put in a lot of work on this one. It is really good. It's an offline editor. Currently, there is also an offline online version made by someone else that is a little bit easy to use, but doesn't have as many functions. But let's go over what this one does, and then we'll go over the online one later on. To start off with here, the database editor is pretty simple and straightforward. It allows for driver transfers. You can edit driver contracts as you see fit. You can edit staff, drivers, anything. You can edit their stats, the aggression. You can even change the mentality as you see here, the marketability, as well as the growth rating, aggression. You get the idea. You can change basically anything you want. You can turn Charles Leclerc into Lord, Lord Percival, <laughs> as you can see. Now, also, you can change the calendar around. You can remove sprints. You can add races, remove races. Generally, this is recommended to do at the start of the season before any of them have been done. But you can, again, change things around as you see fit here. Change around the stats of drivers and cars to, again, make them more competitive, make them less competitive. It's up to you. You also have a performance graph that shows where each team is in terms of their expertise. Basically showing you, in this case, just how close Mercedes, Ferrari and McLaren actually are. You can edit the performance of the engines, as you can see here. Again, you can do a lot of, uh, you have a lot of freedom to do a lot of stuff. You could even add another engine supply but it does require you to use the editor to actually apply to your car you and change again. You can basically just change anything you feel like, and it's actually pretty amazing in that regard. Now, in terms of what you can do with this thing, in terms of adding extra difficulty, as you can see here, we have a save setting up here. And if I click this, we get a lot more information. And if we go game here, 
we can change the mentality. Basically, we can freeze mentality, which means that it's basically become removed from the game. The player has a huge mentality advantage. If you remove mentality, it basically means the AI is going to be more competitive. You can also force the AI to refurbish. Currently, they don't really do that. They allow the facilities to fall all the way to the bottom, which makes them less competitive because the facilities do give buffs to the car and also because it's going to be negative to the mentality of the opposing teams. You can also mess around here with the difficulty as you see currently in game difficulty but if i want to i can force the ai now to run zero kilogram parts which is very huge you can give them research boosts you can give them stat boosts you can also change design times as you see you can actually change things around as you see fit kind of crafting your own difficulty it has been a little bit buggy in the past so i would recommend just sticking to ultra lightweight parts for the time being maybe give them a small research boost to make them a little bit more competitive ai doesn't really research much but I believe there is going to be a fix coming out relatively soon uh, that is going to make this a lot better. So this has been something that has been worked on for quite a while and it is getting better each update. So you can mess around with this as you see fit. Just make sure you make a bit of a bit of a uh, save file backup before you start messing with it. Now, in terms of installing this editor, it's kind of complicated to some degree. As you can see, here, we now have our installation and setup guide here. So you need to download Node.js and install it. You need to download Python, not 3.13. Make sure that you don't do that. And you also need to make sure that when you install Python, you need to add it to path. Basically you need to toggle that box. Download Git and run the installer, pretty straightforward. And then we need to do a little bit of complicated stuff. Basically open the folder and do this. Again, it's pretty straightforward. It is completely, completely step by step here. But generally, you shouldn't have any trouble downloading this and getting it started. Now, once you've actually gotten everything working, in order to actually edit the save, you need to drag it from your FLMinus save folder into the data database, uh, database editor folder. And that way, you can actually edit it. There's also a video tutorial here. So as you can see, I'm not going to go too deep into it because the effort has already been put in. But yeah, basically, it seems very complicated to install this editor. It really isn't. Just take it slow, read each step, and make sure you do it correctly. And I don't think you're going to have any problems. Next up, we are going to talk about the online save editor, which you can access by going to save.f1setup.it. And that gives you this page right here, the F1 Manager Save Browser. From here, you want to find one of your save games and you just want to pull them over like this. And boom, you now have access to editing your save file. This because as you can see, I've already completed the season for this one, but it does give you a lot of, uh, lot of options here. Similarly to, well, what the other save file would be, you can change teams, you can take a look at results regulations generally just mess around with things you can increase cost cap you can increase the, the engine the ERS limits there's a lot of freedom to what you can do here similar to the offline editor but there isn't really anything here that you can do to change uh, basically how change difficulties you can do a lot of the same stuff that you can do with the offline one but the difficulty settings that I showed you are basically for that one only but here too you can change uh, change stats change contracts, you can move staff around. Again, there's just a huge amount of freedom that you have. You can edit your picker here in terms of how quick they are, zero to 100. And well, you can also give yourself more engineers if you if you so wish. But generally, again, you can do basically the same that you can do anywhere. You can mess around with this. You can do a little bit of modding here. It does require a lot more know-how though. So before you start messing with that, just uh, just figure out how it works first is what I'm trying to say here. But as you can imagine here, the save file editor is easy to use because you just dropped in your save file. You export it once you're done. Click this, take the download the save file, dump it back into your save games and boom, you are done. But it doesn't have any difficulty settings. But this is a very good starting editor to mess around with if you want to just spice up your save a little bit like moving couple of drivers around, improving their stats, their growth potential, you get the idea. It doesn't require any installs instructions either because it's an online page. But that is literally all I had to say about 
mods and editing. As I said here, there aren't really too much to do with the mods. All of them do have some pretty good install instructions. So if there is a mod that you want to install that I haven't gone over, take a look at it. And also for Epic users, the mod installations are going to be very similar for you too. You just need to find your save location in terms of where you find save files it should be in the same place. In terms of the pack files, it's going to be very similar. It's just a different install location because it's Epic Games instead of Steam. But again, it should be 100% the same way to do things. Hopefully this video has been a little bit useful. As I mentioned, there isn't too many mods for this game, however. And honestly, that's because of that. I haven't really made a mod video until, that, until now. But uh, if there's an interest for particular mods, I might go more in depth on them. Show you what you can do with them, for instance, with Database Editor. But uh, let me know what you think. And I hope this video has been helpful, giving you a little bit of an idea of what is out there. And if it hasn't, let me know and I'll try and do better next time. Let me know your feedback. I appreciate every, every comment I get. So let me know what you think. Sorry for babbling on for so long. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.